Hi, my name is Tim. I'm Senior Application Specialist at ATR Soft. In today's webinar, we will have a look at working with configurations. With me today, I have my wingman, the traveling sales manager, Mr. Francois Simon, who will answer your questions. Please use the chat box on the GoToWebinar panel. I will make room after the session for more questions to let you follow this presentation better. We expect this webinar to take somewhere in the range of 20 minutes. Due to hardware issues, we actually have cheated a bit and pre-recorded this session. This will be made available online immediately after this webinar. Okay, let's get started. In SolidWorks, you can work with configurations in many ways. But when it comes to drawings, there really is only two options. Either you make one drawing and add sheets per configurations, or you create individual drawings per configurations that you may have. If you create individual drawings, then you will truly find some time savings in this webinar. There are quite many things that you are facing when working with configurations. The obvious one is to print out drawings for an assembly and making sure that you get everything correct. If you also need to convert drawings into PDF and maybe even model files into step, then the task is almost impossible to accomplish. Using individual files per configurations will make SOLIDWORKS to lose track of them, because drawings has to be the same name and location of the model. Making design copies is also a job which requires steady hands to get done correct. I'll open up SOLIDWORKS and cover everything live for you. The first thing I want to do is uh, create a new file, so I've opened up my bracket template, and then I'm going to save that using custom tools. So in my properties, I'm going to define a drawing number as well as a description, and this could be anything. So this is just going to be a beam mounting. And that's all I need to do for this one. I can set material, of course, uh, that could be plain carbon steel and different other settings in, in SolidWorks. But that's okay, uh, so I'm going to save that one. And now that's done. So I'm going to create a drawing as well for this. So create a new drawing. And just select the drawing sheet. And three standard views, that's it. Just make sure that we have sheet scale defined and just move them, moving all views uh, using shift and drag and drop. So that's a nice feature if you didn't know that exists. But that's fine, uh, I have now a drawing to go with that. So this is going to be called the same as my part file, pretty much as you would do in, in SOLIDWORKS. Close the drawing and then create an assembly. And just insert that one, like so. And then I'm going to save my assembly because I want to add a component which has some different configurations. So I'm just going to save this with not a lot of hassle in it. it really doesn't matter. The assembly isn't that important for, for this webinar. Okay, so that's it. I now have a, a part file with a single configuration inserted into my assembly. So now I'm going to create a new file. Uh, for that, I'm going to use my flat bar template. And this one actually has some configurations defined beforehand. So it's 150, 200, 250, and 300 millimeters in length. And when I'm going to save that, because I want to have individual drawings per configuration I have. So I'm going to the properties, create a new sequence number, and a description. So now in custom tools, I want to make the system aware that I'm going to create individual drawings for this. So I'm going to say, yes, I want to have configuration specific drawings. That opens up the configuration specific properties. In this case, I have a drawing name and uh, I need to update that for some reason. Uh, that would then add the 150 to my configuration name. So it's the 150 config I'm working on and the configuration name is added to my sequence. So that is done by using a, a combination property. But I also want to have a, a 
description for this config. So this could be the little guy, little guy, and that's just about it. I'm going to save uh, this file. And then if I look at my properties now, you can see that I have some custom properties. These are set on the document section of the properties. And then I have some configuration specific properties. And notice in here that we have material and weight, especially the weight property. So all of my configurations now have individual uh, configuration specific properties and you can see the weight is being updated accordingly based on the size uh, and weight of the reference config. So that's really nice. Uh, what they do not have currently these configs is uh, individual descriptions. So I'm going to open up my properties again and then I'm just going to pin down this dialog. Now for the 200 I would like to have different description. So this is the 200, hit OK, and then go to my 250 and call that 250 baby. And then for the 300, I'm going to call that big guy. OK. So now all of my configurations have different properties set. So if I'm opening up these configuration specifics again, you will notice that now the 300 has this description. And if I'm looking at the other ones, it's 250 baby, it's the 200 and the little guy. So everything is, is set as it should be. Now, next, I'm going to create drawings for, for this part. So I'm going to create a new drawing. Hit OK, hit OK again, and then insert a standard three view. From the reference config, I can just pick the 150 and hit OK, and that's inserted. And now when I save this file, we are going to save it using that file name. So we use the sequence of the part and add the config name. So that's basically it. I can then go back to my part file, create a new drawing, and I'm going to do this for all of them. Hit OK, standard three view, this time the 200, hit OK, and save it. And do it one more time. Create a drawing, hit OK, and OK to that, and then the standard three view, and in this case it's 250, insert that and save it. And for the final one, I'm going to do that as well. So new drawing, OK, OK, three view, the 300, and hit OK. Now this one definitely should be a, a big bigger. So I'm going to do it like I did on the, on the other one. So like so, and save that. <clears throat> so now I have four drawings for, uh, for this part file. I can then close the drawings, just close that, close that, and close that. Now, custom tools is aware that now this file has different configurations and different drawings attached. So if I'm using SolidWorks to open up this drawing, we cannot find it because it's not the same name uh, and it's probably not in the same location. Uh, we don't know, but it's definitely not the same name. But with custom tools, we are able to open up any drawing that is referenced. We can see the config reference and we can have a preview of whatever is a is referenced here. So we can define which one to open up, but I'm not going to open up anything. Um, instead, I'm going to close that away as well. And yeah, keep that open. So in my assembly, I'm going to insert my bracket and I'm going to use the search for, for doing that. So it's 00018, something like that. 
and there is uh, the, the document that I want to insert in my assembly. Now, mostly you would go into the assembly and then insert a component, but you can actually do that directly from the search. So now I found the component and I can just drag and drop that in and then select which config I'm going to insert. So like that, I really easily inserted that part to my assembly. Now I'm going to add in one more and I'm going to use the 200 just to have two different part files in this one. Now, when it comes to printing uh, these drawings or converting them to different file formats, you would need to go file by file and really reference your bill of material. But with custom tools, that is not a requirement. We uh, keep track of, of your configs. So if I'm going to the print and convert dialog, you can see that we reference the drawing called 150 as well as the drawing called 200 because we insert this part file as a 200 and as a 150 config. So if I'm going to select this, we select the correct sheets to print. Really nice. So if I'm opening up this bracket and I'm going to open up the drawing as well. And actually I need to open up the part file again because I want to add another config to this one. Yeah, go ahead. So now I have a copy of the default. So basically it's just the same, but it's a different config name anyway. I'm going to save that. So now I'm going to open up the drawing for it. And as you can see, this one is referencing the default config. Now I'm going to insert another drawing sheet because this is the option number two or one, depending on how you are working. Uh, and in the first one, I referenced one config, and in the second sheet, I'm going to reference this new config. So I'm going to insert a standard three view of the copy of default. So in with that, just set to use sheet scale, move it about, and then save it. <clears throat> okay. So basically now I have the copy of default sheet and I have the default sheet. If I'm going back to my assembly and run the print and convert, you will notice that we now reference two sheets. And if I'm going to batch print this one, we are only selecting the default because that is the one being referenced from our assembly. To really make that more clear, I'm going to swap this to the copy of default. It's the exact same shape and form, but nonetheless. And then I'm going to run the print and convert again. And this time we are going to select the copy of default sheet because we are knowing the references where we are storing files and, and everything like that. So really a nice tool if you're working with configurations to get things done correct. Now. I'm going to open up this one again. In my company, we have a rule saying that you shouldn't do different materials in your config. You can have as many shapes as you want, but the material has to be uniform throughout the config. So now I have a, a 60, 61 alloy part and I need one made of plain carbon steel, for instance. So in this case, I need to make a design copy of this one and preferably also do all the drawings so we have everything in place. That is quite a, a lot of work in, in SolidWorks manually, at least. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to make a new copy of this one. So going to the properties and then select save as copy. Now I can define a new drawing number for it and everything else is fine, except for the material. I would like to have something else. Uh, not sure what I should pick. Let's just do plain carbon steel. And that is basically it. So I'm going to hit OK, and it will then save the file with the new file name. So this is 19. And when it's ready, it's going to prompt me, hey, how about these drawings that we know 
or referencing your old file, would you like to copy those as well and then update those with the new file name? Yeah, sure. That would be brilliant. Less manual work for me to think about. And we actually update the drawings as well. So I'm going to hit OK. And now all the drawings will be updated. OK, don't show again, save all. And you can see that actually the material is, is changed as well. So everything is as it should be. And I don't want to open anything. I'm just going to close all the windows. And then I'm going to open up the 19. It's not in here, so I'm going to search for it. That one. And there is my part file. And if I want to open the drawings, I can then pick which one I would like to open up. So now I can add this to my assembly because now it's a, a new file. So again, I'm going to use my search window, find the one that I want, and then insert the 300, for instance. And now we get that inserted as well in our assembly. And if I run the print and convert again, you'll see that we know all the references once again, and we are good to go. And this is true also for batch converting your files. We know which config configuration to, to manage. So everything is pretty straightforward. This is all I had to show for you today. I would like to thank you for attending this webinar. We hope to see all of you for the next one scheduled at December 8th at the same time as today. We will have a look at how to use the import and search capabilities and custom tools. Thank you. Have a nice day. We are in the life-saving business. We kill your routines before they kill you.